I, I did turn down other head coaching jobs, but this, this is my home, you know? My family's still here. I care so much about this region, and I, I think that chip on our shoulder we carry as Eastern Washington people. The council is now in session. With a personality shaped by being an athlete and a background in mainstream sports media, I found that the stories I was most interested in telling were the ones often overlooked, the ones that might not otherwise be told, the ones that show the intangible and not just the highlight reel. The Sports Council is about highlighting the great, the good, the unique, and everything in between in the Pacific Northwest sports world. I'm Jamie Council. Thanks for joining me. You're listening to the Sports Council on 1340 ESPN, the Tri-Cities leader in sports. Missy Strasberg, head coach for women's soccer at Eastern Washington University. Before we get into the team, what is your background? Because you're obviously a coach, but you were a player before you became a coach. Yeah, I was. I, my story is interesting. So it takes when you get that interview question, they're like, walk us through your history and your background. And it takes about half an hour just to get through that question. Yeah. Um, I'm local, right? I grew up in North Spokane, played at Mead, played at the local clubs, played through the ODP system here. So I'm incredibly rooted in Eastern Washington soccer, just geographically, care a ton about it, grateful, had great coaches here. Went to Gonzaga, uh, finished playing, really thought um, pro wasn't really an option domestically. At that time, the league was brand new. But I think for me, I was just ready to like adult. Right? <laughs> um, so I, my degrees in marketing, I worked in marketing in a couple different fashions, um, got talked into picking up like a U14 girls team locally with a friend. And I was like, Oh, I don't know. I mean, you know, sure. I'll get into a little bit of coaching, but I've, I'm, you know, I have an adult life now and I wear fancy clothes and I, you know, you just get not get into that. And, um, when I finished playing, I really didn't think about coaching. I just thought that chapter, I've closed that chapter and I'm moving on. And um, to get the opportunity to be with some younger players, again, through a club I was connected to as a club I grew up playing in, I loved it. So I picked up a high school team. I picked up a couple more club teams, eventually quit my job and was a full-time director with the club locally. Um, and then from there, I realized I wanted to coach collegiately. So um, got into the master's program at University of Washington for intercollegiate athletic leadership. That really was my pathway in because part of their curriculum is internship hours. And so I picked up an unpaid second assistant position at UNC Greensboro with a friend. And because I was on student loan and interning, quote, getting credit, I just got my foot in the door, which was great. So um, I ended up, gosh, this is my eighth division one program. I don't think we, <laughs> we, I think, understood the transient nature that comes with assistant coaching in particular, but coaching collegiately and made my way back. I was in the South for a couple different schools uh, in Texas, was in the West coast of California uh, in the mountain West at a couple schools. And then um, was really lucky to land at air force for the five years before I took this position. And I, I did turn down other head coaching jobs, but this, this is my home. You know, my family's still here. I care so much about this region. And I, I think that chip on our shoulder, we carry as Eastern Washington people about the big city in the West and the players and the attention and the pool. We have a great amount of talent in this region. Um, I, again, I'm grateful for my experience here being blue collar and hardworking. And that's exactly what we want to build our program on. So to have the opportunity to come home, um, trying to do something historical with this program with players that are from this region in particular, half our rosters from the state um, is pretty amazing. Yeah, and I always say, even if you plan to do something, the stuff that you fall into that was meant to be, then you know it's meant to be if you didn't try to do it. <laughs> yeah, I really wasn't trying. It, it, it just presented itself, as my brother would say, the stars aligned. And um, I don't know. I, I mean, I really just I fell in love with it. And it, it takes on, it grows and evolves. I think certainly going from assistant coaching to head coaching is it's a different animal. Um, but like working with amazing strong women is 
the best. Yeah, it's the best. And you are a defender, so you have more of a defensive mind. I do. And so what, how does that transpire into the teams that you're coaching? Because I kind of uh, see it. I think we had a prior conversation that you just have a disruptive offense, make the short field. It's not, you know, for one club team I played for, it's okay. Three people release every single time. And it's like these flight paths and all of this where you're just do a good job on defense. Don't allow people to score be disruptive, wait for your opportunity. And um, so what, what was that like being a player to being a coach running, not just your own position, but the full 11 full gamut. Yeah. Cause as an assistant, I, I did work primarily with, with back four back five type players. It was really proud of the work I did here, but scoring goals is the hardest part of the game, right? If it wasn't our games would look like football scores and basketball scores, right? Cause there's so many possessions. Yeah. Um, so the great irony is as a center back, how much more time I actually spend on the attacking side with our team currently, because it's hard, it's hard to, it's hard to outscore other teams. Um, I think I look at things from the perspective of a center back as a player. I'm like, what were the things that I would love most to have seen, which is, I would love our team to high press to keep the ball away from the player I'm defending in front of the goal (laughs) as much as possible, you know? So there's, there's quite a lot to, to how we attack that is based on um, ways that I want us to try to keep from having to defend, uh, which includes again, being a very high pressing team as we've seen really the evolution of, um, but was one of our greatest impact points in 21 when I got here was, was putting ourselves in a position to press higher up the field. And it's been a journey in this now in your fourth season. Um, and without looking back, because it's always about building blocks and building with the players you have. And then with recruiting the pandemic through a huge wrench and especially not being a power five or power four team. Um, but that being said, it's kind of all paying off this year where you are ready before season, before conference play and the big sky has even begun, have as many wins as you did last season. So what's that like to just, I guess, bet on yourself being we're building something and now you're seeing it all start to come together this season. Yeah. You know, there's a phrase um, that kind of comes out of construction, right? Think about people at work in construction. You can have it fast, you can have it good, or you can have it cheap. And but you only get two of the three. And again, we're a mid-major, so we're always going to have to do it with, we're going to do more with less. That is that is like the DNA of Eastern. Um, and then you have to choose, if I want to do it fast, I'm not going to be able to do it necessarily well. And by well, we mean something that's sustainable, something that as players contribute and graduate and new players come in, that that success can be sustained and it's not reliant on one single player one personality, one goal scorer, one goalkeeper, that the system by nature is designed to be a team centric team contribution type system. And we've seen that with our goal scoring this year, it's very spread out. It's it's lovely in a lot of ways, Um, but by design and how we defend needs to be more collective as well. So that aspect of, of making that decision early, as I said, I would never, sacrifice one team for another thinking down the road or down the future, but building something sustainable takes time. Um, in discussions with people, uh, my friends at Clemson that have been at the final four this year, um, point Loma who won the D two championship this year, they're all doing those things in like years, nine and 10, eight, nine, 10. And they would say the same thing that it takes time. It just takes some time to develop and build if we want to do it right, it takes time and I'm grateful for the commitment and the patience of the players, especially really retaining the group that we had a year ago to come back and say, we want to, we want to be better. We see what we're doing. We added some elements this spring um, that were really important to make sure the team is continuing to move forward with how we now play a lot more possessionally out of the back, but that takes time. That's not something you can just throw in, uh, in a fall season. So the addition of staff of, of Hayden Hollinger has been really positive in that fashion to be able to, we can split the team more specifically and give these guys more development time that's specific to their position. And that, that matters exponentially when you get more feedback and more time coaching wise, you're going to see much more growth in your team. So it's, yeah, it's taken a little longer than we would have liked. I'm not patient by nature. It's not one of my <laughs> greatest uh, qualities as a human, but it's that thing if you just stay the core. So we believe in what we're doing. 
um, we really, again, we haven't changed much of what we've done this year. We've added on and that progressively has, has been an important factor for us finding more success. Being self-aware is always a good thing. <laughs> and, uh, I think taking a look at the team, when you take a look at the, the record or records, um, but when you're building something, that's what kind of stood out. When you take a look at the roster, it's not like you had players leaving the program because they didn't believe what you were building. That's really cool just to have that support from the people you're coaching being like, well, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. There is. And, and I, you know, I think a lot of that has to do with the players have done a great job creating an environment for themselves where they are, they're connected, they love each other. Um, there's a lot about being at Eastern that they truly love. And, and again, like this is not an experience. I don't expect them to love me or love what we're doing every single day. I, I didn't as a player either, but to be committed to, to each other, I care more about them being committed to each other and the vision than being committed to any one person, including a coaching staff. And, and I think in the, the big game, like the big picture of things, that's going to lead more to success if they're willing to fight for each other. And that, that was a cultural shift that happened that needed to happen when I got here in 21. And again, that has taken some time and evolution um, within the players in the program to say, we're going to make sure that internally things are better. We treat each other better, that we celebrate each other, but we can still hold each other accountable. Uh, and again, that takes time. It's incredibly uncomfortable as we know, um, to have hard conversations with peers, it's much easier to celebrate them. But that the commitment to the vision, I'm grateful for, but I'm, I'm much more grateful for their commitment to each other. Well, we're going to get into the team, but first we're going to take a uh, quick break. You're listening to uh, the Sports Council on 1340 ESPN, your Tri-Cities leader in sports. It's harvest time at Krispy Kreme. Get into the season with our Golden Harvest Collection, featuring four delightful seasonal donuts, available now through October 6th. Swing by to discover even more tasty treats waiting for you. And don't forget, two dozen original glazed donuts are just $24.99 every day. Plus, fundraising is in full swing, so book yours today. That's Krispy Kreme. Come in with a sweet tooth, leave with a smile. Proudly offering 10% off daily for military and EMS personnel. Visit us at 2805 Dupertail Street in Richland. Inconveniences can happen at, well, inconvenient times. JRT Mechanical has plumbers and HVAC technicians available 24-7 if an emergency does arise. Or if you feel like your house isn't cooling like it used to. Or if you're tired of a hose leaking from last winter's freeze. JRT is an honest, reliable company that's been in the Pacific Northwest for more than three decades. Give JRT Mechanical a call at 509-314-4314 or visit JRTMechanical.com. If you've got a winery, brewery, or dairy, why buy industrial parts and supplies from across the country? Central Industrial Sales is your local source for supplies and equipment for the dairy, food processing, winery, and brewing industries. We specialize in custom fabrication, industrial cleaning equipment, sanitary fittings, valves, pumps, chemicals, and many other supplies. Everything's available through our website, by phone, or by dropping by our office. Call 509-375-4032 or find us at centralindustrialsales.com. You're listening to Jamie Council on the Sports Council. We're back on the Sports Council catching up with Eastern Washington head women's soccer coach, Missy Strasberg. In your fourth season, Eastern Washington, Tony and yourself, and that really carries through the program. So when you take a look at the roster, there's players from Eastern Washington, um, a lot from the Tri-Cities and Yakima area, and we'll be talking to one of the players from the Yakima area later. but. How does that kind of go into your recruiting with who you are and what you're building at Eastern Washington? Yeah, there there is so much talent. I don't want to say that out loud too much because we don't want people in our region poaching players, right? We want the best access to the best players as often as possible um, within some of these hidden gems. You know, the way the youth system is set up, right, we have two major, major leagues. Um, we have some representation, at least out of the Spokane teams in those leagues, so there's a lot of there's a lot of visibility for those players. A little bit more difficult in the Yakima Tri Cities Valley area, although I wouldn't say those players are a secret. Some of our country's best players have come out of that part of the country in particular. So um, we care a lot about uh, the personality and the character of a player and how that 
bleeds from who they are as a person, how they compete. Um, this region, and again, I, I am biased. I, I will openly say that <laughs> is um, in terms of the, the values about them being unselfish, about them being hardworking by nature, about being blue collar, uh, about being deeply committed to something bigger than themselves. We see that a lot more out of this part of the country. There's, there's a lot less entitlement than other pockets that we've experienced. So it's not just enough to have talent. We want talent. And in some cases, I'll be the first to say recruiting wise, we, we definitely made some challenging choices my first year here when we're like, maybe that's just not the right fit for what we're trying to do here. Um, and while wildly talented, maybe just missing some of those things of like sharing success and being committed to other people in a bigger cause. So we know we're going to get a lot more of that coming out of this region, typically, and um, and we can include a little bit of Idaho and Montana, some of these little smaller, underdeveloped, I would say more really underexposed pockets. Um, and there's a lot of gratitude based on people's experience with that. And that's, I'm going to be honest, it's becoming harder and harder to find in the new world of college athletics. We talk about NIL, we talk about roster caps, and now the big, you know, people getting paid. I mean, it's it's happened. It's the genie's out of the bottle that how can we retain selflessness and gratitude with young people that we are trying to help become amazing 24 year olds, 28 year olds, 32 year olds, like whatever they choose to do, want them to succeed. And a lot of that comes out of being open to the lessons created by a competitive division one environment. It's like the reason I do this, I think really, truly. Um, so building our team on the backs of, you know, in-state players in particular, a lot of players from Eastern Washington, we're never going to get that salt to the earth, humble, hardworking contribution. Yeah. So let's get into um, some players on the roster. Take a, take a little look at the team that you guys have already gotten your first win at home. You guys are starting conference play next week to see where exactly you will line up Um so uh, we'll start in the Tri-Cities, okay. even though not one of the, the main players, but it was really cool watching uh, Bella Bunnage mm-hmm. from Richland, Washington, mm-hmm. get her first collegiate start, mm-hmm. um, a freshman this year, and one of those players that you said that is very, stands for what you are, those mm-hmm. hardworking, humble players that you're looking for at Eastern Washington. Yeah, she's a, she's a fun attacking player, and I think um, she her competitiveness and her standard for excellence, her, even her unselfishness gets lost. I think from some people, uh, because of that, she's a big, like loud, fun, high energy person. And she cares a lot about personal success, but she's completely bought into the team first aspect and she'll do anything. I mean, she'll do any role that she's being asked to do. She plays up front. We can play her wide, um, equally as good, but she came in and she's come in as a first year player, like expecting a lot of goal production out of herself. It can take some time. You know, Chloe Pat took a little bit of time. Maddie Morgan took two, two and a half years to get going when she was here. Certainly a Tri-City player that was a big player for us. So it can take a little bit of time to adjust to the college level. But we love Bella. Her energy is fantastic. She has a, a relentlessness about how she attacks. I don't. She doesn't really know. And he, she doesn't know how to manage uh, her tempo right now. So we either get 110 miles an hour till she's done <laughs> and then she comes off. But um, we appreciate that enthusiasm in terms of like how ruthlessly uh, she attacks. And she she loves that part of the game, which is important. And she's just a freshman. So is. you mentioned, you know, Maddie Morgan, your main goal scorer last year. And then Chloe Pattison, she's a junior. She hasn't been much of a goal scorer, but now I believe she has – seven Mm -hmm. goals in the past five games. Yeah. That is really cool to see her break out and a really cool story that she has. We were just talking about it before the interview that she was recruited for track. And then you're like, Nope, I want her on the soccer (laughs) team. (laughs) Yeah. She, the opportunity was presented to us by a colleague. Um, She went through a bad injury that prevented a lot of soccer recruiting. And they gave us a heads up that she was going to be here for track. We invited her in it was a clear yes for us. She did have a couple goals that first year and she really set up a lot of what Maddie did last year in terms of goal scoring. Um, We just knew we're just going to take a little bit of time. And 
she was able to, you know, even this year, she went through three or four games where she hadn't scored yet. And, you know, she continues to <laughs> play balls to other players and set people up. And sometimes just a reminder to take your own shot. And so we're, we're incredibly happy for her in terms of what she's been able to do um, really in the last four or five games. And uh, just her confidence is in such a better place. And uh, you mentioned earlier in the show that you have a lot of different goal scores. I believe eight different players mm -hmm. have recorded goals. So, I mean, we could talk about, this is only a half hour show. So <laughs> we, I know, could talk about a full hour we about could. some of these players. But highlight a couple of the players on the roster um, that they're doing good things this year because it's it's a lot different of a team than we saw last year, like we talked about in the last part of the show that it's really the building blocks that are starting to come together. Yeah. I mean, I think we, we start from the deepest line forward, you know, Cam uh, Willoughby had a challenging year last year was suffering a little bit with just some nagging injury that, that really just didn't put her in her best pos position to play at her capacity. Um, but she's healthy and committed and super detailed and, um, she's obviously having a great year in goal for us. So it's nice to see a bounce back season from a player like that. Uh, you know, Iris Mattern is the young freshman coming in out of Seattle playing at the back. That's really, as we worked on building and being a more possession based team, this spring has really helped solidify that with her composure. Again, she's, she's a natural leader. He's an, even as a young first year player and, um, just, she's very adept on the ball. She's very, very clean defensively. So she's really added a, a linchpin in that position for us to create a, a lot more consistency as we build, um, and comfortability. And that, that is important because it's allowing the ball to be played higher up the field, more successfully with better quality. Um, we're getting much better chances on frame because we're able to work the ball through the lines this year as opposed to having to skip over the back line. So it's a, it's a positive thing that she's added for us. Um, in terms of, we think about the center midfield block, uh, you know, Elizabeth Cole, who's a Tri-Cities player, right? Isabel Moultrie, who's a, a transfer, or Isabel Herding now, right? She got married this <laughs> summer, is um, a transfer from Gonzaga, but from the Yakima Valley. So again, two Eastern Washington rooted players that are doing a great job for us in the center of the park. Um, whether it's distribution, whether it's ball winning, but have, have been a really, really solid pair. Uh, and then we look into our wide space. You know, Grace Terrell has been a big production player for us and does a lot of the workhorse work for this team um, out wide. Um, you know, Jill Martin has played wide. She's played up front. Uh, Cat Cup coming off the bench in a lot of moments has been really productive, getting herself a goal at South Dakota, a big one. Um, but these impact moments being willing to step on, being willing to contribute in, in a variety of different positions is important. Our team cannot play 90 minutes. No player on our team can really play 90 minutes. Unless you're Gato. Yeah, I mean, you know, unless you're <laughs> Becca Gato, I guess, who probably can play 180 on some days. But um, the, the purpose of what we want to do is to load share our minutes and our production because it's going to help us be healthier and fresher come October and hopefully November. Yeah. When we see teams make deep tournament runs and CAA runs, a lot of the time is because they manage themselves throughout the fall and they just are fresher and more enthusiastic as we get into to the deeper part of the season. So to have impact and contribution and fixers coming off the bench and working into those minutes has been incredibly important for this team this year. And again, it's one of the, the bigger changes we've seen from this team is we can go 17 players deep, 18 players deep without drop off. In a lot of cases, we see bumps in performance when we, when we make changes off the bench. With Big Sky play starting next week, you guys have UNLV and then Boise yeah. State on today and then this weekend. You guys are picked to finish second to last in Big Sky play what kind of conversations are going on where um, I don't think you guys expect yourself to finish there? Well, we definitely don't. Um, I, I think some of that voting is honestly sometimes for just social media content. Uh, if I, if I do say that, uh, I don't think there's many people I do know, you know, and I have a great relationship with the big sky. Our coaching, our coaching staffs are, are very respectful. We have great conversations with each other. Uh, everybody would say even last year, they don't want to play us twice. That's for sure. So 
um, I think, you know, the, the, the outside perspective of people from this team coming in was we lose a Maddie Morgan, we lose a Madison Kem, um, that the team would be weaker. And, and obviously we feel quite the opposite in our results and our performance throughout the, the course of the non-conference season has shown that I'm not sure we would be picked there right now if the voting were to be uh, yes. done again. Um, but with that said, I think that gives this team a little something extra, a little extra chip on the shoulder of something to prove. We are very good when we're in an underdog capacity. It's yeah. always been our mantra. Uh, our team has grown massively in terms of what it's like to be the better team and how to find wins when we're the better team, which is much harder to do. So I think we feel really good going into big sky play. Um, this portion of this four game swing for the mountain West is a really good test for us. And as we know, uh, San Diego state really picked to win the mountain West. And, um, I think again, we're, we were appropriately disappointed from that game feeling like we, we probably should have won that game. Um, so if we're good enough to compete with a mountain West champion, we should be good enough to compete as a big sky champion. And that is, you know, we're 10 games away from that, but we've got, plenty more to grow. We've got uh, additional opportunities with UNLV Boise state to take another step forward with the team and, uh, and really make sure we are firing on all cylinders come next week with Portland state. Well, thank you so much for your time. So again, Missy Strasberg, head coach for Eastern Washington women's soccer and uh, coming up in the show, we'll hear from a Yakima native out of Davis high school, Katrina cup, a player for Missy at Eastern Washington. Best of luck this weekend. Thank you. Inconveniences can happen at, well, inconvenient times. JRT Mechanical has plumbers and HVAC technicians available 24-7 if an emergency does arise. Or if you feel like your house isn't cooling like it used to. Or if you're tired of a hose leaking from last winter's freeze. JRT is an honest, reliable company that's been in the Pacific Northwest for more than three decades. Give JRT Mechanical a call at 509-314-4314 or visit JRTMechanical.com. If you've got a winery, brewery, or dairy, why buy industrial parts and supplies from across the country? Central Industrial Sales is your local source for supplies and equipment for the dairy, food processing, wine, and brewing industries. We specialize in custom fabrication, industrial cleaning equipment, sanitary fittings, valves, pumps, chemicals, and many other supplies. Everything's available through our website, by phone, or by dropping by our office. Call 509-375-4032 or find us at centralindustrialsales.com. Barbie has come to Krispy Kreme to celebrate her 65th birthday. Come in and join the fun with their Barbie collection. Four new donuts to help celebrate her special day. While in store, ask a team member how to download the app for more exciting upcoming donuts. And it's fundraising season. Get your fundraiser scheduled today. As always, get two dozen glazed donuts for $24.99 daily. That's your local Krispy Kreme. Come in with a sweet tooth, leave with a smile. 2805 Dupertail Street in Richland. You're listening to the Sports Council on 1340 ESPN, the Tri-Cities leader in sports. Uh, my name is Katrina Cuff, and I'm a women's soccer player for Eastern Washington. And this year you got a goal on the season. How, how have things uh, been going for you? You guys have been having quite the start to the season that a lot of people didn't expect as we were just talking to Coach Strasburg before this. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely been uh, fun playing with this team. I love the girls and uh, I think we work really hard to work on our culture and just make sure it's a positive environment for everyone. Um, I just think that, as Missy had said earlier, like we're good at being underdogs and it's fun to um, push people's expect expectations of us. So, yeah, it's been a really good year so far. You've grown quite a bit since your time at Davis High School and being the underdog, I feel like being a Yakima native, you're you're used to that, right? You're kind of in the um, the black hole of recruiting and always overlooked. So how have you grown um, as either both a person or a player since your time at Davis High School? Yeah, um, I think get, just getting this opportunity, it just like, um, it's really helped me grow as a person, uh, just helping people from our community too, like understanding like you're never too small of a person, you're never from a, an area that's not that necessarily Yakima is a small place, but again, like you said, um, Davis is 4A, but um, has just struggled in the past, especially women's uh, sports, 
getting seen. And so I think it's been really fun to um, be a part of a community where so many of us from Yakima are getting this opportunity and being able to be that for uh, the younger generations to come. Yeah, and being on the roster, you take a look down where you're seeing, you know, Yakima, Yakima, Tri-Cities, and these are players that you probably grew up playing with or, or against as well. So what's that like for you of being able to still see a lot of familiar faces here at the college level? It's so much fun. I think uh, it's been fun, especially for us in Yakima, just growing up together. I mean, uh, having Isabel join us this year has been such a blessing and so much fun. Uh, and just playing with people that Jill and I and Kendall Moore also have just been looking up to and playing with. It's uh, just a really great opportunity. And this year, coming off the bench, and it's kind of funny talking about, you know, bench where I asked Missy about it, and she says how just how deep you guys are, that it's not a drop-off of anything, it's a spike, because you, players aren't expecting that type of production from the bench that you guys do have, and players being interchanged of starting, or even you getting getting a goal in South Dakota, of you have a lot of production from the bench. So with that being said... You're in a good spot, but how do you want to see yourself progress this season? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I I definitely just want to challenge myself to take a deep breath when I go in, um, just because I know that everyone's working so hard and we're all such a, a we over me kind of team. And so I think going in and taking a step on that field, just taking a deep breath and being like, okay, like we're here. It's my last year. Let's enjoy it and just like make the most of my time on the field. And uh, this year, you guys are have already hit the number amount of wins you guys had last year. What's been the difference? What's so special about this year's team at Eastern Washington? That's a great question. Um, I think we've had some really great uh, girls just step up. This uh, Our freshman class, are, they're really special people. And um, I think every single one of them is a leader in their, in their own way. And whether they're on the bench or they're getting minutes. Everyone's just there for each other. And we're so supportive of each other. And um, I just think that's all the difference is we know that we maybe fell a little bit short last year and we just want to prove people wrong. And we know we can make a difference for ourselves this year. And uh, we just want to prove people wrong. So uh, conference play starts uh, next week. And this is your last year. You said you want to enjoy it. Uh, but what is next for you? I recently just applied to some physical therapy schools. And so I'm hoping next year that that's something I get the opportunity to do. Um, just finishing up uh, fall quarter, winter quarter and spring of physics, which will be awesome. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm just I'm really looking forward to what uh, this year and next year have for me. That's exciting. And I covered you when you were in high school and kind of talking about the family dynamic a little bit where both you and your brother play on Sundays, um, you know, your older brother, Cooper Cup, playing for the L.A. Rams. And so I wonder how the family splits that up just because they do such a great job um, with four kids of splitting the time and supporting you guys each in your own ventures. Yeah, absolutely. My parents do an amazing job of being there for all of us equally. Um, thankfully, this year, when the Rams are away, most of our games are home. And when we're away, the Rams are home. So I think that worked out well for my parents. And uh, yeah, they just do a really good job of splitting time and seeing us both do what we love. So Eastern Washington and the Rams lined up the schedule so that way it fit the Cup family. Exactly. <laughs> Well, that wraps up this week's show of the Sports Council. Thank you for joining me on 1340 ESPN, your Tri-Cities leader in sports. A reminder, the Sports Council happens four times a month, 1130 a.m. on Thursdays. But you can listen to the show not just over the airwaves at 1130 on Thursdays, but also on demand at 1340 ESPNradio.com via podcast, wherever you get your podcasts, just search for the Sports Council. And it's also available via YouTube. So lots of ways to listen to the Sports Council and support our local sports community. Until next time, I'm Jamie Council. Now we go back to your originally scheduled Seattle sports programming.